Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a PayPal donation from Frank. And since he didn't give me a topic, I want to discuss how male and female transgendered athletes are pissing off a lot of female athletes out there. Because the female sporting competitions these former dudes are entering means they're winning all the prize money, while the biological women turn redder and redder with anger. But before I get to this topic, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Tom has been going MGTOW for quite some time and doing video requests on my channel. He has also been selling dozens of different products like the ones that you see here. Most vitamins and minerals are poor, ineffective, and unabsorbable garbage. Ancient Purity follows the principle of super clean products that are absorbable and at a dose that works. They're also getting decent reviews on Amazon.com. Also, these aren't the chemicals they put in the water to turn the frogs gay. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! So visit AncientPurity.com today. Anyways, now back to the topic. I found an article that finally got me to cover this topic and it's called Martina Navratilova apologizes for calling trans athletes cheats, unquote. And it's the first link in the description. It seems that she's apologizing for calling trans women cheats now that a sports nonprofit for the LGBTQ community decided to sever ties with Navratilova. She herself was a lesbian tennis player that was probably the greatest female tennis player of all time. I just love it when political correctness bites lesbians in the butt. I've talked about this before about how lesbians are getting really mad because transgendered women are coming into their communities, no pun intended, and taking away the attention, resources, and even the women. Part of the LGBT community is pushing rather hard to call men getting themselves chemically castrated and getting a pair of boob implants misogynists, but it's just not going to work. Trans people already have high suicide rates and society is pushing to have them accepted everywhere. You can't attack them and promote them at the same time, it seems. People that attack them are quickly learning that it's going to cost them money, fans, and the respect of other lefties out there. Women are already making a lot less money in women's sports because far fewer people are interested in watching them, rather than male athletes. But imagine if suddenly women had to compete against formerly male athletes. If all of a sudden the men that aren't good enough for the NBA decided that they're going to get hormone therapy and a pair of knockers and start knocking on the door of the WNBA. What about if they actually want to go into women's soccer? They might be able to make more money in a semi-decent living turning themselves into dudettes and entering the women's competitive sporting world. Issues like this are making feminists mad because they have been about promoting the idea that gender is a fluid thing that can change and doesn't depend on biology. Suddenly some feminists just aren't happy about losing their position and privilege and having to share it with a non-biological woman. I predict that in the future, feminists will change their tune and try to implement what the Japanese are doing. In Japan, if you want to be transgendered, then you have to lob off your twig and berries and turn them into sushi. Otherwise, you can't identify as female. So you can easily imagine the day when Western feminists say the exact same thing. That you can't identify as a woman unless you get the full surgery and look as close as 100% possible to the real biological thing. But that would actually destroy the idea that gender shouldn't be binary. That there's a rainbow of genders out there. That would piss off all the people that identify as half female, one quarter male, and one quarter cat. For all the furry fans out there. You know the people that have surgical tails inserted up their schwing schwangs. I think that all this is perfectly fair because women have been complaining about equality for the longest time. And now they're getting real equality and they don't seem to like it anymore. Eventually they will complain but no one will listen because people are already listening to the transgender tennis players out there, and they're no longer listening to the greatest lesbian tennis player of all time. But how far will this go? The second link in the description discusses the career of a transgendered weightlifter named Laurel Hubbard that's in New Zealand. His slash her competitors born as females were probably secretly happy when Laurel injured herself at the Commonwealth Games. So yes, you can now compete in the Commonwealth Games as a trans person. How long before trans women start running in the women's 100 meter dash? When they don't even have a gash, stealing all that gold medal cash. Somewhere out there in the universe, intelligent aliens that are watching our planet are watching this and laughing their antennas off. Dressing men up and pumping them full of estrogen to compete in women's sporting events is like painting a cheetah into a pony and entering it into a horse race. It doesn't matter how fast Seabiscuit runs, that horse is still destined for the glue factory it seems. I believe this whole trans sport thing is cheating, but if you don't allow it, then you run into a mob full of social justice warriors. Feminists wanted female superiority and even dressed it up as equality. Now they're getting a taste of their own medicine and are dressing it up as misogyny and men's rights. 
But how can male-to-female transgendered athletes be misogynistic when they aren't even technically classified as male anymore and identify as women instead? How can they hate women so much that they're actually trying to turn themselves into one? Speaking of level playing fields, Google recently looked into the gender pay gap in their corporation and found out that women are actually being paid more money. So does that mean that men's salaries have to be raised so that we have equality between the two genders in this particular case? After all, it's only fair that if you treat one half of society one way, that you treat the other half the same way, right? I predict that as the numbers of trans people in our society continue to increase, there'll be more and more of them finding their way into professional sports, competing with women for the prize money and popularity. Remember that we're living in an attention economy. There simply isn't enough attention out there for everyone. To have a healthy amount of self-esteem, you need people to acknowledge your existence. If you don't get enough, then you might get depressed. Women in our society get attention simply for being women. So is it any wonder that men that don't get any attention from anyone because they're invisible are trying to turn themselves into ladies and competing as them too? Can you imagine if Bruce Jenner was young and a star athlete today? He'd probably be in the Women's Olympics. In 2018, the Olympics allowed transgendered competitors, and that was a first for the Olympics. It's only a matter of time before the women's hockey team in most countries not only sports a bunch of bull dykes, but also sports a half a dozen members that were once upon a time men. What's next is the left going to have a campaign called Pedophiles Are People Too and start making it socially acceptable for people to invite them over and hang out with their kids like Michael Jackson. Will the lefty liberal parents that don't agree to bringing them over be shamed and attacked for their choice to protect their own children? Much the same way that female sports personalities and feminists are now fighting to keep babes with balls away from the volleyball courts. Feminists say they want equality and are trying to weasel their way out of the very rules that they set up and that society is supposed to follow according to them. They have turned much of society into social justice warriors. If they criticize the same people they themselves created using their ideology, then they're attacked the same way that they would attack anyone else that doesn't conform to the ideals that they first set up in the first place. I generally know women to be better short-term thinkers when it comes to interpersonal relationships than many of the men I know. So feminists got the short-term advantage by letting trans people into their communities because it provided an extra ally for them. Now that ally is drinking their milkshake like that scene from There Will Be Blood, and they don't know what to do about it anymore. Martina Navratilova was probably so used to being the biggest victim in the room her entire life that she probably thought that the last thing in the world that would happen to her was for basically her to be made out into the bad guy, or the bad gal in this case. Women have succeeded at making trans women bigger victims than themselves, and now if they criticize their own creation, they'll get punished for it. They can't undo this situation, and if lesbians or feminists try to create some sort of movement to stop the trans invasion of their communities, they will be called regressive, and no one will want to listen to them. They got the world they say they wanted, and now they don't want it anymore. I think that's deliciously ironic, and it's all about poetic justice. Remember that the men's rights movement is mostly made up of men that are middle-aged and above, just like Navratilova is in her 60s and out of touch with the current level of social justice. When you get older, time seems to move a lot faster, but it really doesn't. All that happens is your perception of time speeds up. Moments that used to last forever when you were a child or a young adult are gone in the blink of an eye, so you don't perceive change to be happening that quickly, and you don't see the world around you changing all that much. So when you open up your mouth and criticize a transgendered Olympian, you just come across as old and out of touch with the current reality. It's like giving a stereo to an old person and expecting them to wire it up, or giving your grandmother a tablet and asking her to reset or restart it. Most of the time, even a task like that becomes too difficult for a brain to change itself to accept. So if you're a lesbian woman in your 50s or 60s and you've been at the top of the victimhood hierarchy totem pole and the world has changed in the last 5 to 10 years, you could be in trouble. To you, 10 years might actually seem like a year or two have gone by, but you have no idea what a mistake you're making. Speaking of people that probably have no idea that they're making a mistake, a good example would have been Joe Rogan when he had Jack Dorsey on his podcast the first time, and didn't say anything with regards to hard-hitting questions. Luckily for him, he saw the audience reaction and responded by bringing Tim Pool onto the next Dorsey interview, and people responded much better. Joe was in his early 50s and time is now accelerating for him, so odds are he's starting to become like one of those guys that threatens to shoot the neighbor's kids if they step onto his lawn. So it's great that he brought Tim in there because Tim is in his early 30s, and for him, time runs at a regular speed, and he's more grounded in reality. 
Plus, with Tim Pool, I'm predicting that at some point he's going to get more traffic and subscribers on his YouTube channel than even CNN gets. He's already about a quarter of the way there. And I listen to him all the time because his reporting is not biased either to the left or to the right. Although he says he leans to the left on the political spectrum in his own life. So what other things can trans women take from biological women? What if suddenly there are affirmative action programs for trans people the way that they're actually created for blacks and women? Suddenly you could see a spike in unemployed men dressing up like Mrs. Doubtfire and taking women's jobs. What about the gender pay gap? Who gets paid more? A trans woman or a biological one? Right now many people seem to think we have a gender pay gap between men and women. What happens when trans women complain that they aren't being paid as much as by a women? It will be interesting to see how women respond when they are on the other end of that argument. It will be funny to watch them get angry at the situation that they created themselves. As for the level playing field in sports between female athletes and trans athletes, I predict that eventually women will make a push to get rid of trans athletes completely. When that happens, I predict there will be all kinds of lawsuits aimed at women's sporting leagues. They want it to be inclusive. I guess they just figured that it wouldn't become a sausage fest and all the weenies wouldn't be taking all the cash and prizes away from them. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. I just want to finish by saying that women probably thought they could actually make inroads into male spaces and territory forever. The last thing they thought about was men identifying as women and taking hormones to invade female spaces and taking things away from them. They made their bed, now they have to go lay in it. Sorry, there's already a trans person sleeping in their bed, however. I guess they better find a new place to sleep and someone else to complain about because trans people are a protected group, just like women. Thanks again, Frank, for your donation, and I hope you enjoyed this topic. Don't forget to smash the like button the way that the male-to-female athletes smash all the piñata prize money in women's sporting events. Bang the bell and check out the MGTOW mystery link. Follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Subscribe to me on Minds.com or Gab.ai to get the video for the day after tomorrow. I'm also on BitChute. If you get any value from these videos, then please consider donating on either Subscribestar or Patreon. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember... A red pill a day keeps the graceful transgendered Winter Olympics figure skaters away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.